Um, and then over to one of the um, bigger updates that we are uh, coming out with in 238. Um, and I'm going to show you this. Um, we um, we can now um, we, we are now looking at uh, uh, the standard bundled uh, capture app that was bundled with 238. Um, but um, after installing 238, you will also have um, uh, the opportunity to upgrade uh, to a newer version than the bundled version. Um, so if we go to the app management app here, uh, we are now informed that um, there is a new version of the capture app. Uh, you can see here core apps with the uh, updates available. Um, and um, opening this um, this page, we can see that there has been two um, uh, more recent versions than the than the stable um, th than the one that would be released with your WAR file when you install DHS. Um, uh, to install it is very simple, really. We just click the install button up here, um, and uh, you can now see information about uh, the. Um, installed version under uh, under this um, uh, button um, <clears throat> and uh, if we now uh, simply open the capture app we will, we will uh, be directed to the updated capture app and not uh, the one we were uh, looking at uh, a moment ago um, there is one um, visible difference when we now open the child program and look at the organic in Gallihun. One very visible uh, difference <clears throat> on the top of the screen above the working list, uh, we are offered to opt in to use the new enrollment dashboard for the child program. As you might remember, when I opened Anthony's record, I was directed to the old tracker app and I would still be um, after upgrading the capture app to the latest version. Um, but now uh, certain users would be offered the opportunity of, of um, Opting in and testing the new uh, testing the new um, enrollment dashboard. Um, to see this message, uh, you would have to log in with a super user, or you would have to have access to uh, metadata right for the program child program. So this will not be visible to a regular user unless they have uh, one of these privileges. Um, I'll try to click here for you, and, and um, here's a little bit more information about um, about the testing and the fact that this is um, uh, this is a testing of a uh, product that we we are we are not uh, totally finished with. There is some functionality that's not um, built yet, and we know that um, when exposed to the world, there will be configurations that um, contains. Um, uh, uh, contains uh, things that we had not anticipated. Um, so it's very, very useful for us. If you can go and opt in and test um, the, the capture app with your own configuration um, and uh, let us know um, when you find anything that, um, that looks um, not to work uh, like you expect uh, with your configuration. Uh, right now I'm gonna go ahead and opt in. Um, as you can see, the, the opt-in message on the top disappeared. Um, instead, we have an opt-out message at the bottom. And what happened now that I, click, that, that I clicked the opt-in message is that for the child program, uh, any user that would uh, use the new, um, use the capture app um, would be directed to the new, um, new enrollment dashboard that I'm about to show you in a second. Um, so uh, the opt-in, this message is only visible to, uh, to certain admin users, but um, if opting in, it would affect all the users. Uh, we also have a backdoor opportunity for opting in just for one user. Um, if that is uh, relevant, uh, you can reach out to us and we will help you uh, on how you would uh, do that if you wanted to opt in for just one user. But uh, just know that opting in here means all users. Um, so I'm going to now click Anthony GS1 again, um, and uh, we're going to see that we're not directed to the old tracker uh, anymore. We are now uh, seeing the new enrollment dashboard um, with uh, an overview over stages and events to the left here. Uh, we see the birth and post postnatal stages. Uh, we have uh, widgets to the right for comments, for indicators, for the for the um, 
uh, profile or track and instance information uh, and for the enrollment. Uh, in this page, uh, I can also edit the, the profile, uh, for example, adding or changing the name if that's necessary. Um, and um, uh, program rules would, of course, be running uh, in, in, in this form as well. Uh, we have, <clears throat> have the enrollment uh, widget down here um, that uh, allows us uh, to do um, the, uh, some of the um, uh, common enrollment uh, operations, uh, manipulations. Um, <clears throat> and um, uh, we are building this widget out with some new functionality also um, as we go through the continuous release in 238. Um, we're now going to have a look at the birth stage um, and the event that we, um, we just saw in the, um, in the data matrix test. And as you can see, we are now in the in the same view state that you would be used to uh, from the single event programs. So when opening the event, you will see the full event with, with um, all the data. You will see um, widgets on the side with information about the event, for example, the event comments at the top here, uh, any indicators. Um, and um, you would also see which person this belongs to. You don't have the option of editing the profile from this page. Uh, but you would see the name and see who, who it belongs to. And um, the enrollment actions would also be available in this uh, page. Um, you can notice that on top, we now have a context that um, will tell the user uh, where uh, she is in the, in the process, uh, in the navigation tree um, that contains the program and organet like we would be used to. It also contains the person, the enrollment, the stage, and also which event we are looking at. Um, to make a change to an event, we would have to click edit here. And this would uh, take us into edit mode, uh, being able to edit anything that we wanted to do, except for the GT number, which is uh, assigned by a program rule um, based on uh, based on the, the, the QR code that we have entered into the data matrix above here. Um, <clears throat> going back to the enrollment overview, we have um, we have the opportunity of adding the postnatal event, which is not yet added for this uh, for this uh, child, uh, by clicking the plus button down here, uh, or by the quick actions on top of the of the screen. In the quick actions, we also have the opportunity of scheduling a new event. And I'm going to show you this briefly. Uh, as you can see, we can't add another birth event. That's a non-repeatable event, and we already had one. But we have the postnatal, and we can we can schedule the postnatal for this baby. <coughs> um, as you would be used to, the um, the due date would be suggested here in uh, in uh, in the dialog, and and it would be based on the configuration of the program. Um, it is possible to change the due date and. Um, if I uh, do, I know that on Mondays there are no uh, postnatal services in the clinic, so I will change it to Wednesday. Um, and this is perfectly allowed. Uh, I am also informed that this is two, day, two days after the suggested date, um, originally suggested date. Um, there is a feature um, that we um, are um, uh, also, uh, that we have also almost built, which would uh, allow suggesting this um, schedule date based on program rules. Um, and this, um, although this uh, uh, suggested date right now is uh, based on the standard intervals that you configure on the program stages, we, we have um, a feature on the way for um, uh, setting a dynamic date based on program rules. Uh, in case you know something about uh, the, in case the data tells us something about uh, when the suggested date should be, the program rule could set this date. Um, another uh, new feature that we are excited to give to you and hear what you think about is the, uh, the next sentence here, uh, telling us that there, there are no other schedule events in Gelehun on that day. But if there were, was other schedule events, we would actually get to know how many. 
so this is um, meant to be a help for uh, for um, anyone that um, that um, would try to balance how many um, how many patients to schedule on the same day. We also have the event comments down here, so you can add the comment to uh, a scheduled event. Um, no service on Mondays. Scheduling for web instead. This was always supported by the data model, but um, uh, it was not um, uh, supported in the old tracking capture as you were um, you were adding uh, you were adding a scheduled events, um, and it was uh, identified as one of the things that would be useful from uh, from our requirements gathering earlier. Um, right now, though, I'm not going to schedule uh, this event. I'm instead going to report it. Um, that's um, uh, there's a tab up here that lets me switch between scheduling and reporting. So I'll go back to reporting the event and uh, adding the uh, date and any data that um, would be uh, would be collected um, uh, to be added. Um, we also have the same update to the um, <clears throat> to the workflow as uh, Jose uh, was showing us on Android. Um, here in the web um, web form for adding a new event, we have uh, at the bottom we have um, two options for saving. Either you complete, which is um, highlighted as the, the main action, um, or if you're not ready to complete, you would click the button beside it uh, for save without completing. And you would have to click on one of these buttons to and make the choice to either complete or not complete when you save. Uh, so we wanted it to, to be more explicit uh, if you wanted to save without completing. Another thing that is worth mentioning here is that uh, once we start using this form instead of the old tracker capture, uh, there will be much less traffic on the server. Uh, this uh, form here would not be um, stored while working, uh, while clicking through it. Um, all the changes would only be um, here in the client until I make one of the two choices down here. When I do click complete, then the, um, there is only one call sent to the server. Whereas in the old tracking capture, we were storing between every uh, every, um, every field. When we updated one field, that would uh, value would immediately be sent to the server, meaning that if this was old tracking capture, I would have already made uh, six calls to the server. Uh, whereas here in the new capture app, I will only make one when I click complete here. Uh, yeah, and here you can see now on the overview that we have our completed uh, completed event. All right. Um, so I think I have covered everything I have planned, and uh, that was everything from the tracker for this release.